Hey guys, this is Thayden again. I'm following up with uh, add-ons part four. Um, today I'm going to be going over the add-on Skinner and specifically the um, viewports functionality in it. Um, Skinner does a lot of nice things for you in terms of cleaning up your UI, but the thing that I particularly like most is the ability to utilize viewports, so that's what I'm going to be focusing on. Now, my UI, I like to keep it relatively clean, and as you can kind of see here, this is this is my healing setup on my uh, Holy Paladin. And um, you see I've got all my bars and everything down here at the bottom in a nice little uh, kind of grid grid layout here with my recount and my chat channels over here. Now, the downside to this is I've got all these bars down here, and they're basically covering up about you know two or three inches of my screen. And so if I were to be in a raid or anything you know, particularly important where there's something down in this area, I wouldn't be able to see it. So what I use to fix that problem is Skinner. So uh, let me go ahead and open up the options for Skinner. Okay. Now Skinner's got a lot of different things that it does for you. Um, uh, for instance, if you look at my bags, um, it, you see this doesn't look like a typical bag. Uh, it looks a little bit cleaner uh, and has the nice transparent uh, look to it. And it does things like that. Um, but let me go ahead and if you go down here to where it says modules and click on that, you see a bunch of tabs across the top here for button settings, viewport, top, middle, and bottom frames, and unit frames. Uh, if you click on viewport, there's an option here for viewport show. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now all of a sudden you see something change uh, in the background. You see this black bar appeared here on the bottom. Now, since I have my viewports already configured to an exact height, you notice this black bar goes pretty much exactly right above where all, the, uh, all my bars end up being. Um, and that's putting the uh, viewport at its maximum height. Now you can set your viewport to whatever height you want. And you see as I drag this back and forth, uh, it moves up and down. But the important thing to note about a viewport is it does not actually cut off any of your screen. It looks like you're losing some of your screen, but in reality you get a little bit more. Because if I put the viewport all the way down, notice on the left hand side where that fire is. Let me uh, move here. Oh, they left. Okay. Notice this squirrel right here, that lovely squirrel. Okay, so if I put it right there at the edge, you can see it's just barely in the frame, but if I start increasing my viewport, you see it starts to come more and more into the frame. In fact, I can even start to see this crystal over to the left of it. So by increasing your viewport, you're actually just making a wider perspective of what you're seeing, but you actually still see everything on the screen, if not more. Personally, I choose to only use the bottom viewport, but if you really wanted to, you could also use your top viewport and watch as I increase that, you see more and more of the picture come into view as well. So that is one way to kind of do a, an ultra widescreen kind of perspective if you like to do that. Anyway, so I'll just go ahead and leave it. I, I like to keep my bottom viewport maxed out at 256, um, and that gives you this black bar. Now that's not very nice, um, so what I like to do is you have these options here of top frame, middle frame, and bottom frame, and basically what those are is they're kind of nice little boxes with a cool gradient effect that you can add to kind of smooth out things or wrap boxes around important items. So I'm going to click on this bottom frame show. And again, I've already got mine set up at a specific height to match exactly with my viewport. And now it has this nice faded gradient um, going so it doesn't look like you know, you're just staring into blackness on the bottom. And this height can be configured, you see, uh, and I'll just keep it, you know, you can do it really huge if you wanted to, but I'm just going to leave mine at 160, which matches up exactly. Now, again, you can use those same frames however you want. Uh, if you go to like middle frame, you can, you can see in middle frame, there's middle frame 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, there's a whole lot of them that you can use, and if you click show, you see this box just kind of pops up here, and you can, you know, um, you can move these around on your screen and there they go behind things so if I wanted to go like behind my portrait or something like that I could do that 
you know, I mean, not necessarily that I would want to, but if you wanted to do something like that, you could, or if you had something in particular that you wanted to frame, you could do that. So that's kind of how the, the framing works. Similarly, if you did have a top viewport on, if you did the top viewport like that, you could go do top frame, show it, and then you could adjust the height of that as well. And, you know, you could do the gradient up there also. Um, that potentially could work if you just wanted to do like a little one, you know, like a little viewport at the top, something like this, you know. And then you could have your buffs up there and different things. Um, but personally, I'm not really looking up there too, too often, so I'll just leave that off for now. Um, in terms of the other features of Skinner, um, there's a lot that you can do. Um, and you see these, these options here for NPC frames, player frames. Um, I have most of my player frames off because I kind of like some of the traditional looks. Um, but for instance, if you notice my spellbook is normal here. If I go and I turn on my spellbook frame, you see Skinner takes over and it does the, the transparent kind of gray sort of look to it, uh, which is a little bit cleaner, but I kind of like the, the standard look, so I, I don't usually keep it on. Um, let's see, for background, there's a lot of different things that you can play with here in terms of doing textures and backgrounds for all of your uh, different um, you know, modules and, and windows. But uh, I guess just go ahead and play around with it. Uh, if I find something else that's uh, particularly useful that I really, really like, you know, I'll make a follow-up video. But the main thing I wanted you to get out of this today is just how to use uh, viewports. So um, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave me a comment, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll talk to you later.